Hello everyone and welcome back to 4 Kilobyte Shorts Let's Play of the Dark Eye. Um, I, I had started to record this a little bit ago and um, I forgot that I was using Push to Talk once again and so I was recording all this video without any overlay. Um, I don't know if that was any more fun than not, but uh, we're going to do it with the overlay with, with me talking because that's the whole point of a Let's Play is the commentary. Um, now if everybody remembers correctly, we were just playing the piano for our cousin Elise and she started puking up what appeared to be buckets of blood. Um, now because of that we are in the dark world and so there is one more story that we have to do. And while I was doing this before I actually realized that each one of these represents the two halves of the story and if you notice one is kind of a benign object um, such as the bird cage that represented uh, Berenice and then the other one is a weapon of some kind or, a, or something evil and in this case it's a blade. So in order to keep up the consistency of, of going with the victim first, we will be using the fish. Which apparently we rub its eyeball and then... Ah, I know this story. This is the Telltale Heart, one of the more famous, more well-known stories of Poe. And in this case, we play the master, the guy with the eye, who gets murdered. So let us look around our, our place of abode and the gentleman who lives with us, shall we? Alright, once, once again, just walking around the room, taking a look around, you can see different things. There's a strange man outside, apparently. He may knock on my door shortly, I believe. Can't go that way. Okay, so we have the window and we have the door. Is there anything else that I need to do? Well, maybe I have to go... I can't just go straight. Ah, uh, yes, I can't just go straight. I have to go sideways. A bowl. Oh, I'm making myself some food. Nom, 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 nom. Food, okay. So you don't have coffee in a bowl. Soup. Let's have some soup. Not the best looking soup. But we're going to sit down for some food. Then I sit here and feed my... I don't know how many times I have to do this. Or maybe it's just a few times and then there's something else I have to do. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Let's continue to eat. Okay, kind of annoying a little bit, I think. Um, I was hoping I could like, read the newspaper or something, but apparently not. Okay, last time, because that was just annoying me. So, dinner and then to bed, perhaps? Okay, I don't need to knock there and can't go in, so let's head down the hallway. And there's a lamp. We all know what that lamp is. Whoa ha ha. And then uh, there's a light on the other side that went out. And all sorts of my own stuff. Let's look at our stuff, shall we? July 4th, 1901, is that what that says? Or 1801. Or 1891. I can't see it from here. Oops. That seemed to be the only way to exit that. Let's try that again. It's money! Exactly seven dollars and change, perhaps. Okay, so now let's turn and perhaps we go to bed. We do not go to bed. Hmm, what's next? Ah, my lovely wife, I'm so little. Same music as the thing with the 1891 festival thing. I wonder if he maybe he met her there. No, it's still not time for bed, so maybe we should head back out the way we came. But what's this? A book? The Cyclops, much as me. Ah, I believe my roommate has come home. Oh, good evening. Oh, good evening. 
Let us speak to the Blackguard, shall we? Is something troubling you? Of course not. Your eye doesn't creep me out or anything. <laughs> Premature burial. She possibly died through sheer terror. Now, um, this right here, I don't know how many people may know this, but this is actually a mock-up from a London newspaper, an actual image from a London newspaper dealing with Jack the Ripper. Um, I, there's actually a full picture. I don't know what the full picture is, but this is this is a Jack the Ripper picture from from uh, 1890 something. Um, so just just for some information for everybody, that's an actual photo. It was not made for this for this game. Yay for information. Soup. Okay, I think I'm done with the soup, so I'll put the soup away, perhaps. Care for some supper. More soup, then. No, thank you very much. Okay, I guess I don't do anything with the soup. Strange, strange, strange as that may be. Maybe I put the soup back. Okay, well that's done. I'll go and relax in my chair. Or not. Well, then, let us go on to the bed place, perhaps. Perhaps. My, it's getting late. <sighs> Technically, that clock says it's almost midnight. So, yeah, it is getting late, old guy. Good night. Sleep well, old friend. Old friend. Alright, now we should be able to just go to bed. I don't think I have to put out the candle, do I? Oh! Sleep at last. Looks like I do. Mwahaha. <laughs> ah, it's been a long... Oh, mm. oh yes. Yeah. Alright, now I have some choices to make. I can either choose my roommate or I can choose some other items. Um, I'm going to, to do this, I think. I believe these are his dreams. Alright, and then we'll, um, we'll do the door, I think. Who's there? What could it be? Someone? Who? <gasps> the end. Ah, back to the real world, if you can call this the real world, with a fish and a meat cleaver at the end of a hallway, being considered a kitchen, perhaps. But now it's time to go talk to Uncle in his inflamed, enraged state. And he's not here again. Well, let's take a look at the paintings. Oh, I think I know where he might be. He might be in his office. And that's a negative on that one as well. Hello again, brain map. I believe, and don't quote me on this, I believe that's referred to as phrenology. Um, and I only know that because House was supposed to be a phrenologist, which is, um, I believe it's actually the study of the bumps on the head. I'm not entirely sure. It's some weird crap like that. What's going on in here? Anything good? Oh, the note. Yes, yes, the note. Okay, now she asked me to deliver the note before my little fainting spell and um, talking to the fish. So we'll go and deliver the note to my brother. Henry, Henry, are you in, brother? 
from Elise? That's what I was told, dear brother. Wait! I need your help. Oh. Edwin has become completely unbalanced. He's violently angry. He even refuses to call for a doctor, claiming her condition is due to my unnatural advances. We must conspire against him. We must take Elise from this dark place. You, my brother, you must help me. Okay, that one was a little bit more like in your face than the last one was. I'm not sure how I... Oh, hello. The mistress Elise is no more. She is dead. Hmm, I wonder how my brother will take the news. He doesn't seem to be taking the news. Shall we go? Let us go talk to Uncle. He should be in, around, or near his study, I think. Perhaps, perhaps. Let's check. Nope. So I think I know where to go at this point. You know, I didn't talk to the little munchkin upstairs, did I? I don't think you can actually talk to people. I think you just trigger them by walking into them. So if he's not over here standing... Okay, yeah, so I gotta go... I gotta go this way. There's only one, one other place that I think I remember them to be... And that is down, 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 down. Dreams have a way of never leaving you. How do you go from Elise is dead to talking about my dreams again, you little munch? And maybe in here? Nope, not in here, so I'm missing a trigger point somewhere. I think maybe I need to speak with my brother once again, but he was not being cooperative. Quoth the raven, where do I go? Ha ha ha. Let's check in here and see if there's... nope, nothing here. Alright, dear brother Henry, let us speak. Okay, so Henry's not here either. So, dead body got that. Check this room. Ah, here we are. Here, eh, she's on her deathbed. Blah. It's my fault. All my fault. I loved her as I've never loved. I refused to believe she was ill. My mother, my dear, dear mother died in much the same way. Poor, poor it was uncle. guard the secret of Henry's proposal. It only blackens her memory that she should die under indecent circumstances. Cousin, there was nothing indecent about my affection. Surely my grief compares with yours. Now, dying under uh, indecent circumstances to me would suggest that she was uh, in flagrante delecto when she was stabbed to death or something. That I can understand, but being proposed to by your cousin, creepy as that may be, doesn't exactly cause indecent circumstances to the point where it would leave a bad mark on your name when you're... It would just be one of those weird stories they tell at parties. Please leave me to grieve properly. I ask only that you allow me to sit vigil just until dawn. Yes, it would be proper. Your brother will need light. Go fetch the lantern I was filling in my study. Okay, old guy. I'll go get the lantern while you and Henry duke it out over the corpse of your dead daughter. Because that's not weird or anything. Although I will say it's kind of odd that he changed his mind about Henry so quickly. Hello, little lamp. Let us go forth. Lead me. Lead me to victory.
Good, set it here. I'll pick it up in here. Thank you. Nothing so violent as that, I'm afraid. Alright, my work here is done. Lamp delivery completed. And it was such a stressful scene that I had to come back to the Dark Realm. Alright, now there was another poem that I wanted to show everybody, and I believe I get to it by going upstairs. So let us go upstairs and see. Perhaps, perhaps. Oh, come on. Excuse me. Uh, well, it's not up here. I thought you got to it by coming upstairs, but now... Now I do not recall, and it makes me sad. I could look around some more for it, but I'd rather not, so we're not going to for now. We're going to continue our story of the Telltale Heart, and we will continue to, um... We will continue to do that one so that we can complete it. And onward. Onward to the blade. Oh, you don't... True. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why do people say that I am mad? Because you murdered a guy for having one eye. I don't believe I have to do anything. I believe for this one is very short. Um, I just have to walk down the hall. Oh, my room, of course. Oh, I can finish my painting. Arrival. Now I should be able to enter his room. There it is. Gently. Oh, so gently. You'd have to be a very profound old man indeed to suspect. I look in on him while he sleeps. Sort of. Stealthily. Stealthily. Closed. The eye is closed. Well, that doesn't do me any good if the eye is closed. How am I to murder a man when his eyes closed? Okay, well, I believe that's all I needed to do. Well, I can't do that. To the next day. And once again, the next. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Alright, I believe I'll just go to the clock again, perhaps. Oh, nope. Already midnight. Don't even have to wait. Perfect. Let us go. Stop it. Thank you. Let us opening the door little by little, and he doesn't even dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. <laughs> <laughs>
The question is. How could he have heard? I'm too much of a cautious genius. Who's there? Oh. I know that groan. It's the low sound that rises from the bottom of the soul when charged with mortal terror. Many at midnight, it wails up from my own bosom, deepening with its dreadful echo the terrors that distract me. Yes, I know it well. Because of that damn eye. Poor old man. <laughs> He's been lying awake ever since that first noise, his fears growing, trying to fancy them causeless, but he cannot, because death, stalking with his black shadow before him, has enveloped the victim. Hence he's going to die. Whoops. Oh, I opened. <gasps> there you go. Surely it will burst! What if... What if a neighbor should hear it? I must make it stop. Now to go about as soon as it loads of as I will vex me no more. Now, what shall I do with the body? I think it's already been done, so I don't have to. But what do I do now? Mm, nothing to see outside, so let us go forth. Back to the dark, icky room and see what's up. What shall I do with the body? Oh, right, I need to acquire something, I'm sure. Let's see, maybe from my room, perhaps? Maybe from the kitchen? Let's see, my room? Nothing there. Not to bed, I don't believe. No, that wouldn't do me any good. Maybe I'll get an idea from the newspaper. Nope, no idea from the newspaper. Let's look around. Let us look around and see what we might s Ah, hello. Now who has a wood saw just hanging on the wall like that? That's just too creepy. Think I figured out what to do with the body. But in silence, I dismembered the corks. I cut off the head and the arms and the legs. Until there was no more. All done. Ah, I cannot look at myself, I'm so evil. Now I should be able to go in. He 
you. Let us remove the floorboards and put in the body. I have no idea what part's in there. Probably the upper torso, I believe, with the size and all. There, all deposited neatly between the scatlings. Because it won't drip, leak, and no one will ever smell it. Replaced so cunningly, no human eye, not even his, could detect anything wrong. Nothing to wash out. No blood spot whatever. All has been caught in a tub. <laughs> so creepy. And he's so full of himself, too. Visitors so soon after a murder? Hmm, who could it possibly be? Coppers! Sorry to disturb you, sir, but somebody or other heard a scream or some such called us up. We've got to check these things out. What are you doing awake at this hour? That'll do, Finley. Come in, officers. Come in. There's you nothing in, to be found. Do. I'm so arrogant and full of myself. Well, what about the scream, Sarge? Oh, the screams, sir. What do you know about anything like that? Oh, that was I, Sergeant. I called out in a nightmare. I'm given to nervous fits. A gentle man like yourself. Well, what about the old man that lives here? Finlay! Gone to the country. Lucky man. So lucky indeed. I'm not sure why I have no control over anything. One moment. Might we be looking about a bit? Of course. Certainly. Search. You will find nothing. Not even the bloody hacksaw. I hung back up on Check the wall. over there. The stove as well. Yes, sir. Sir. You'll want especially to look into the old man's room. Yes, look particularly here. So I can show off my genius of not getting... Here, boys. Watch it. Sorry. It's actually a perfect profile for a, a mass murderer or a serial killer is the fact that he wants you to look where he's placed bodies and such to see if maybe you're too stupid to catch him. Sit, sit, all of you, do. Don't mind if I do. Finley knows. It's been a long day. He keeps his treasure in that drawer there. Since I did not try to rob him, you see, that means there was no murder. Of course, they don't suspect me. My manner has assuaged them. Indeed, they are delightful fellows. Oh, it's a lovely night, though. The stars are out in all their glory. Hasn't been disturbed, sir. Well, everything seems to be in order. Don't go. No, stay. Stay a moment. Rest yourselves from your various fatigues. Let me gloat some more. He sits on the very spot. This is the hour of my perfect triumph. Ah, oh, my head. And what is that annoying ringing in my ears? 
Will they never be gone? And that ringing? But wait, it's not in my ears, it's... Oh my God! Can't they hear it? No. I'm safe. If only they'll leave. They must hear it. They must. And still. How is it they don't hear it? They suspect me. I know it. They suspect. They know. They're mocking me. Villains. Cruel villains. And insanity sets in quickly. Stop. Stop! I admit it. I confess. Tear up the planks. Here. Here. It is the beating of his hideous heart. Line could have been delivered so much better. Not by me, of course, but by somebody better than And thus we have completed the Telltale Heart, the second of the three uh, subplots in this story. And due to that, I am going to go ahead and pause the video here. So I would like to thank you very much for joining me for Kilobyte Short on this Let's Play of the Dark Eye. And I will see you next video.